Intel's ATX 3.0 16-pin power connector for PCIe Gen 5 is smart, has four power delivery variants. So basically with the new GPUs coming, they will have the 16-pin power connector on it. And so you'll need to be ready for that. URCD Keys is the best source for genuine Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys that work the first time, every time. Get 20% off normal prices using our discount code BST for Bite Size Tech and the link in the video description below. Well, here's what's interesting. What does it say? 450 watt is the contemporary sort of stock design. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. this is designed to allow up to six 100 watts Woo! for compatible power supplies and compatible graphics cards on a single power connector. Damn. The four data pins will allow two-way data communication between your power supply and your video card for the first time. Because currently it's a dumb connection. The power supply and the video card can't talk. But this will let them talk. And if they don't communicate or if they're not compatible with each other, or you're using adapters to connect like eight pin to the six like the yeah. to, to you know yeah. to make it work with older power supplies, then 450 will be your max. But if you have a updated ATX 3.0 compatible power supply and an upcoming 40 series graphics card or 7,000 series from AMD, they can go up to 600 watts on one 16 pin cable or 1,200 watts on two. Really? How do you know? You just need a Mr. Fusion for your uh, computer. A Mr. Fusion? Yes. No. Nope. Oh, we didn't end the uh, poll. Oh, end the poll. Uh, it's not what it says, Brian. It says 16 pin there, mate. Hello there. Um, the 12 pin was the custom one for the founder's cards that NVIDIA did for the 30 series. That's not a standard. That's just no, NVIDIA's that... weird thing. Yeah. This is a 16 pin... This is an official ATX specification, not NVIDIA's whatever NVIDIA wants to do. Can the US bring enough chip making back to be able to cut off China? 51% said no, 48% said yes. Wow. So 50-50. 50-50. We shall see. I think it can. It, it's just going to take longer than we have. Brian says here comes some sort of DRM. Now that the power supply can talk to the graphics card. Yeah. Hey, Obi-Wan Kenobi came into chat. Everybody say hi to Obi-Wan. Yep. Let's see. What do you want to say here? Oh, um, this shows you the... If these are the, the, the data sense connectors. So if the grounds are both open, then the initial power at startup is limited to 100. And then it can go up after that, after software configuration. If they're both grounded, then 375 is the startup power and up to 600 watts. And then here's the pinout. So it's 12 power pins and then four sense pins. What do you think? 55 amps. 55 amps on that power cable Wow. Um, Ed says that Wendell from Level 1 Text mentioned that current power outlets can support a stable 1500 watt from the wall before being wonky. This is true. Um, it's technically 1800 watts max, but it's 1500 sustained. 15 amps at 110 volts is 1800 watts. That's... But that's max peak pull. You should never pull more than 80% of a rated circuit breaker. That's what your breakers are in the in the garage or wherever your breaker panel is. And so 15, if you've ever seen a space heater or a hair dryer, they're all 1500 watts. Small space heaters, big space heaters, cheap hair dryers, expensive hair dryers. They're all 50, at least in the United States. If you're outside the United States, it's obviously gonna be different. If you have 220 volt power, it's gonna be different if you have different amperages. But in the United States, 15 amps at 110 volts, 120 volts, is the standard, and so that works out to 1800 watts peak, 1500 watts continuous. Mm. What that also means is that is why 
1300 watt power supplies are typically the biggest you can find, but you can find some 1600 watt, 1600 watt power supplies, but you should really only run a 1600 watt power supply on a 240 volt power main, unless you have better gauge cable and you have a 20 amp circuit on 120 volts, in which case, uh, then you've got 2400 watts peak, 2000 sustain, in which case you're fine with 1600 watt power supply. Because mm -hmm. remember, power supplies pull over the rated wattage to account for their loss. Correct. So a 1300 watt power supply might really, at full 100% load, might actually pull 1400 watts from the wall. A 1600 we'll might pull, pull 1750 17. from the wall and trip your breaker. But you really shouldn't be pulling max power from a power supply anyway. Yeah, your standard circuit breaker is 15 to 20 amps. <laughs> Only dedicated power lines just for your GPU. <laughs> More warp speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people's uh, electrical, that 8095 house that we saw up in Maine, that, I mean, that whole house would need to be rewired. I mean, could you imagine doing tech stuff in that house? It's like... We've run into that problem here. Yeah, we the have. The problem is you put three computers in a room. And in my benchmarking room, I tried to set up multiple test benches, trip the circuit breaker. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I did consult with an electrical company about putting higher voltage lines up there or more amps or a second circuit. Running new electrical wires in your house isn't cheap. It's doable. Not when you got all the walls up. Well, and everything's stapled to the damn walls. Here's the other challenge. We ran out of breaker sockets in our panel in the garage. Well, in that too. So we'd have to replace our panel. There's no more room to put more breakers. No, we would, yeah, we would need a, we would need a whole new panel. Yeah. There's been a lot of learning curve. Oh, elect ele electrical? It's complicated. I mean, it's math, but. Yes, and the 15 to 20 amps is spread across multiple plugs and devices. Your monitor, your computer, your printer. Your heater, your, your lights, your camera, yeah, everything. Your, uh, your, your, oh, oh. your Mr. Coffee coffee heater. You want a Millennium Falcon. <laughs> 200 amp service, yeah. The 200 amp service is typically not the problem. It's the individual lines to individual rooms on individual breakers that are the problem. Because they can only handle so much. We do have a sub panel. We, we already have a sub panel. But we've maxed it all out. Ah, oh, dear me. A new panel is easy for grand, yeah. Yeah, it's... It is a major investment. If we wanted to replace the panel and have it, and here's the other kicker. I would, if you're gonna do it, you don't wanna just rewire one room. No. I would wanna rewire four or five rooms to, to give them 20 amp breakers or to give them 240 volt service. But of course you can easily run 240 volt lines for your computers. I mean, these laptops, these desktop computers will all perfectly, not only will they be happy to run on 240 volts with no change if the power supplies are auto switching, they're more efficient at 240 than they are at 110. Mm. But you got to make sure that the outlets and the walls you plug them into don't get anything else plugged into them by mistake. How did you get a 30 amp 220 volt line for under 40 bucks? Probably did it himself. Oh my gosh. Which is no. fine if you don't burn your house down. Oh my gosh. No. ZPM? Every time to wire them, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, a hair dryer? Yeah. You'll just trip your breaker. Yeah, you'll trip your... But a lot on. of bathrooms will actually have a 20-amp circuit instead of a 15-amp circuit. You sometimes will get away with it. Why not switch from one phase to three? Because We that's, don't have three phase. Well, you would have to get it put in, but... You can't here. But it, that, isn't, it isn't available. It, three phase is usually only for commercial areas. Like, um, actually, the house that we lived in, because mom had a ceramic factory and she had a kiln... Actually, she had several kilns. We actually were able to get three phase run to that, but that was that was residential in Australia. But here in America, where we live, you can't get three phase to residential. You can only get it to commercial buildings. Commercial buildings. You can get multiple two hundred amp services run, and uh, there's no reason for a three phase service to a residential house, um, unless you have a. Super luxury matching. 
Linus might have three phase run to his house, but I mean, you know, he's rich and has the money. Um, you know, somebody like Elon Musk or Bill Gates can have three phase run, but you can have anything done with enough. You can solve almost any problem with enough money, but that's not sane. What you can do is get multiple 200 amp services, but the 200 amp service is not a limitation. Not even close. Don't overestimate this, but it's the wires inside the house. Need to be beefed up. And it's the outlets in the walls. And if you run 240 volt outlets with 30 amp breakers, then instead of 1500 watts, you have an outlet that'll put out 6,000 watts. However, before you guys all get excited about your electrical upgrades, y'all are forgetting something. If I take a room like the one we're in right now, this is a, a 18 by 22 foot room. Yeah, probably that. It's about 400 square foot room. Let's say that we put a additional power line into this room, 30 amps, 240 volt. That is 6,000 watts. That's in addition to the 110, 15 amp circuit that's already in this room. So we would have the camera and the lights and the, everything else run off of the 120 line. I call it 110. I guess it's technically it's 120, but it's just a habit. And then we would plug three or four computers into the 240. That is potentially 7,500 watts at max of heat being generated. Imagine five space heaters running in a residential house's room. It's a lot of computers. Your HVAC will not cool that. <laughs> Your HVAC is designed to cool a normal residential house with the, with the returns and the air blower on the house. But if you put 7,000 watts of heat into a room, the room will quickly overheat and there's just no way to remove it. So now you have to install dedicated cooling for that room. Put a mini split on the wall, for example. But you can't put a little baby mini split. That's a lot of heat. You're putting a two ton mini split on the wall for just that room. Not the end of the world, a couple thousand bucks. But when everybody wants to say, why don't you just get more power run? You're gonna spend $5,000 to put a new electrical panel in. You're going to spend at least $1,000, if not two or 3000 to run a 240-volt line to maybe four rooms of your house. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have to run some dedicated cooling lines to this. I mean, you're looking at a $10,000 plus investment. Yeah. So you can have a couple of extra computers in your room. This is why we didn't do it. I know. Jacob said he just got his mucky and he had a 40 amp circuit installed. Yes, but that's in the garage right next to your electrical panel. That's easy. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. It's, 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 it's getting it put on Cole. the second floor of your house that's the problem. Cold fusion in the cellar. Solved. Well, here's the other issue. When you're using that 40 amp circuit to recharge your mucky. Yeah. You're putting the energy into the batteries. You're not producing waste heat. Computers are just basically resistive generators. They're just, they're space heaters. Your computer is a space heater. It takes electricity and turns it into heat. Recharging your Mach-E puts that energy in the batteries where it's stored. Yeah. And it's also in your garage and not in your house. We need to, we need a raised floor. <laughs> we need to build a house. This is a residential house. <laughs> Our next house will be a raised floor. Winter climates only. That's it. We have to move to Maine. We'll have all our computers keep us warm. Rizzo? Rizzo misses the point. He says, get a friend who's an electrician. Um, first of all, this is not a one-hour rewiring job. No, this Replacing is... Replacing an entire electrical panel or installing a brand new electrical panel yep. with new 200-amp service with new wires run to multiple rooms in your house is not a favor job. That is two or three guys taking all day. Well, and the fact that all the drywall, I mean, if if the drywall was off the wall. It'd be a lot easier. It'd be easy peasy, but oh my God, 
the amount of money that it would cost to put all that drywall, pull it down, put it back up. Rizzo's also ignoring the key point here. Yeah. The reason you have a real electrical company do it. Oh, so. They're insured. Exactly. Need to move some. If they do it wrong and they burn your house down. Yeah. Are you going to sue your friend and can he help you? Exactly. Yeah, you're going to be like, oopsie. Oh my gosh. URCD Keys is the best source for genuine Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys that work the first time, every time. Get 20% off normal prices using our discount code BST for Bite Size Tech and the link in the video description below. $15 gets you a Windows 10 Professional OEM key that is a real product key, activates directly with Microsoft, use it forever as it links to your Microsoft account and it works through reinstalls. Get a full copy of Office 2019 Professional Plus for about $50 that redeems at setup.office.com using your Microsoft account. It also works forever through reinstalls. We have been using URCD keys for almost three years now and recommend you do so as well.